Hey everybody, good morning. It's Dr. Levi, the Gamers Doctor, the Esports Doctor. How's everybody doing? Happy to be with you today. Today is October the what? Today's October 7th, uh, 2017. It's beautiful here in LA. So this is our Twitch TV stream. Uh, lots to discuss today about about gaming, about gaming exercises, about prevention of injuries. So a lot I want to review with you today. It's only going to be about an hour, hour and 10 minute transmission today, but we have a lot to discuss. It's a very dense segment today, especially for the gaming industry and for gaming esports athletes. So um, I'll take some of your questions later, but more importantly, I want to show you some basic things that you can do to prevent injury. You know, the, the things that I see all the time um, are, are, are very intense with respect to injuries of the, the fingers, especially the thumb. Uh, palmer type injuries, vibrational injuries, injuries to the wrist, hands, elbows, upper extremity, as well as some things that are really what I find correctable, which are issues dealing with posture and, and ergonomics. So, um, so before I get into the gaming stuff, which I, I will do, of course, I want to say that I, I'm hoping everybody can really just send their, their well wishes and good thoughts to the, the people of, uh, and all those who are affected by Las Vegas, the Las Vegas shooting, which is just, uh, excuse me, uh, hold on one second. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. I didn't want you guys to see me sneezing like that. Um, but to uh, send some positive thoughts out to the uh, the people in uh, in Las Vegas, as well as for the, the first responders. So that's that. All right. So let's get let's get started with some things. I want to show you some exercises that you can do for your fingers that are very, very simple. You don't have access to some gear that I'm going to talk about later also. Um, so I want to show you a few things. So you can really just take rubber bands, basic rubber bands, and do these exercises. These are exercises to help strengthen your, your thumb. As well. So if think about it. If you strengthen your thumb and the muscles that activate the thumb, you also strengthen your ability to, to move and use and click your mouse faster. So, and of course, the speed of the mouse will also depend on the sensitivity that you have the mouse on also. That's very, very important. So I just want to show you a few things here. Uh, so basic exercise for the thumbs, just, just like this with the rubber band. It's up, up. I'll do it from the side so you can see it. Up, so I'd say like a set of 10, just like that, just straight up. And to the side, all right, a set of 10, just like this. Now, they may seem really simple and inconsequential, but they'll, they'll really help again to strengthen your, your thumb. Now, I want to show you a stretch also for the thumb that I think is effective. So again, you're here. Simply put one thumb on top of the other thumb and try to press up. And as you're pressing up with this thumb, you're pressing down with the opposite thumb. So up and then press down. So up, press down. Up, press down. And when you're pressing down, what I want you to do is really press in two areas. First, press down for 10 right below the joint. This is the interphalangeal joint, IP joint. So here, press down. So you're pushing back and also pr pressing the opposite way. So here, so 10 this way. And then you want to do 10 where you're actually right above the joint and pressing down. So you're trying to, again, you're pressing up with one and the other thumb is going the opposite, down like that. Now, as you're strengthening your, your flexor and extensors that way, it's also important after you do that really simple stretch, I want to show you something else to do that will help you. So your hands are together like this. Just cross your thumb over. Cross over here. Really, really simple and easy and press down. You want to make it a little more intense, you just press down like that. Just press. But here again, over, 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 over. I recommend two sets of 20 twice a day. You can do these right before you start gaming. Really, really easy. 
All right. Um, now, I want to show you one other thing, too, uh, with, with, the, with the rubber bands. So depending on how many rubber bands you use, it can make it more intense and more difficult, of course. Uh, so here, just straight up, 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 up. Now you want to put the rubber band, if you can, right at the joint line, IP joint, up. And then to the side, here. Now, again, you know, when I'm talking to a team or to an individual gamer or eSport athlete, athlete, it's really important that, you know, you have a lot of exercises to do. What's important is that you rotate the exercises. Don't do the same exercises every day. And if you look at the compendium of exercises that we have online, uh, on YouTube, you know, you have over a hundred videos, and many of them are specifically focused for the gaming community to help you avoid injury. That that's the goal here. Um, I'll take some of your questions momentarily. I want to go over one more thing that I think is important. I want to show you another technique that you can use to tape the thumb. If you're having thumb pain, I want to show you this technique. And it's really, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple, but I think it's also very, very helpful. So, you know, and I, have to, I have to share with you all, you know, for a while I wasn't uh, a big fan of, K t of, of any type of uh, kinesio taping until I really uh, used it on several athletes, and many of them were like, quite clear that it was very, very effective. So... I've been using it now over the past several months and uh, getting really great results, which is great. Um, okay, so I want to show you uh, something for the thumb. So take a look. If you're having pain specifically over your thumb in this area, you can do this uh, taping technique that I like a lot. So you start off with the thumb up, wrap around to the volar aspect of the palmar surface of the thumb and then you're going to take the th the tape pull up with the tape the thumb is straight up fully extended pull up with the tape and down with the tape as you pull down go around the wrist just like this so take a look. So the tape is in uh, a, a serpentine type position, almost like a, a snake or a snail that's wrapping around. All right. You see that? Now you take the other portion of the tape. Again, these are really simple to do. And if you and I, I want to remind everyone, if you don't have access to tape, you don't you don't have to do this. This is just something something extra and beneficial to really help you. So, again, you take the other portion of the tape, the thumb fully extended, down, wrap it right next to the other tape. Again, keep the thumb up, pull up with the tape. Again, down, pull up with the tape, and around, and around. I use this a lot if someone is having a tremendous amount of, of pain in their thumb. And if they're having gamer's thumb, I'll show you something else that I do. To augment it, I do this. And gamer's thumb is someone who's having locking of the thumb here, as well as pain in the first extensor dose compartment with the abductor pollicis longus tendon and the extensor pollicis brevis tendon. So I do this. And this seems to be uh, fairly effective. Not all the time, but, but often. You know, sometimes the, uh, I have to do this injection with uh, Kenalog or a Depomedrol, but I always try to avoid any type of injection with the gamers, but sometimes I can't because they have so much pain and they can't, you know, they can't game. That's their lives, many of them, uh, especially the pro athletes. So, again, for gamers' thumb, I, I take the tape here, press it down, and pull up and go straight across the radio styloid which is here 
and pull back just like this all right so it's here and down and I just you know when you get these funny tags for the for the uh, tape I just cut that off so hold on one second let me just cut this off here great great you know the, the goal the goal with the tape is to make it as as minimal as possible and not super invasive but this I find to be very 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 helpful um, you know that's the, that's the ticket here all right um, I want to take some of your questions also um, so let's go through some so I want to welcome to the site we got jockey fish we got Glutarex, G-L-U-T-T-A-R-E-X, uh, Atsukashi, uh, thanks a lot, glad you're back with us, uh, Nick, T Nick Tater, Seven, Zeladon, Impurifier, Dark Jackaroo, um, so great, Impurifier, uh, and Sad Gassum, TF2, Dr. Levi, big fan, thanks a lot, and Geo Sazen, um, so let's uh, let's take some of your let's take some of your your questions. Um, oh, okay. So I got a question from a purifier. Uh, do you think uh, Lyrica is good use for bulging disc? Okay, uh, I'm 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 not a, a major fan of uh, of a lot of medications in general for for bulging discs. A lot of people often use something called Lyrica or another medicine that's gabapentin if they're having uh, pain secondary to a disc. Um, what, what I think it's better, and this again in my practice, but talk to your doctor about it, is consider using a, an anti-inflammatory like a ibuprofen, you know, Advil, uh, but also acupuncture and physical therapy. I think that's really, I, I really cannot talk about acupuncture enough. I, I've been always a fan of it since I was in my, my teens. And now at 35 plus, I'm still a major fan of acupuncture. I think it's a, a great modality of healing that we don't appreciate enough. And I think we don't appreciate it enough because often we don't understand how and why it works so effectively. But it does. It works really well. So I'd recommend trying that before uh, starting on Lyrica. Because Lyrica can sometimes make people sort of drowsy or very tired um, or not have clear thinking. It has a lot of other side effects too. So those are my thoughts about that. Um, so, next question is, uh, can femur bone cysts cause pain? Yes, depending on where the, the bone is, well, depending on where the cyst is in the bone, if it's in a weight-bearing area, it can definitely cause pain. It can also be prone to fracture depending on where it is. If it's in like the femoral head or femoral neck, that can be very problematic. You can actually, you know, get a femoral neck fracture or a femoral head fracture depending on where the cyst is. So if it's in the, the, the shaft of the femur, that can still happen also. So I'd say continue to have that monitored with x-rays or MRI and be sure to consult with your, your local doctor, of course. Um, uh, Zeladon, uh, console players and their thumb problems. Oh, that's why I did this today. I want to specifically talk about thumb issues because I've gotten so many emails lately about thumb, thumb, thumb. Like, like Dr. Levi, it's hurting, what do I do? I can't play, I'm going from 16 hours a day to five hours a day and I'm still having severe pain. This taping technique should help a lot. So I've shown you guys how to do it and I think if you do it, I, I bet it'll be fairly effective. Now, if you can't do the tape, I get it. Then I showed you several exercises earlier that you can do that I think will be effective for you. It, it's really also about monitoring how much you're gaming and when the pain starts. But again, as I've said before, monitor the sensitivity of the mouse. You know, uh, see what works for you. If it's lower or higher, which one do you have more or less pain with? Make sure that your your gaming station, you know, that your 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 I call it the arena, that your gaming arena is set up properly so that you're ergonomically balanced from the chair to the backrest to the height of the chair to the distance of the monitor from your face to the keyboard position, the, the mouse position, all these things have to be looked at, especially if you want to have a career of longevity. You know, I got, I got a question from someone via email last week who asked me, well, um, why did I not, well, during medical school, why did I not consider becoming a pro gamer? Well, real simple, because I'm not that good. 
you know, you know, pro gamers, these are people who dedicate, I've dedicated, you know, my life and career now to, to helping gamers. And if I were to play as much as I would like, I would not be able to operate because of the vibration issues that happens with, with, with my hands when I'm operating. So with the scalpel, you know, I, I, can't, I can't be shaky. I have to be, be focused like a laser, actually. Um, so that's why. And then I, got also, I was also asked the question, how often do I game? And I, I tell you, I, I game very little now because of my practices and because of my work schedule. But when I can game, I, I do. And what is my game of choice currently is I, I really like Overwatch a lot, specifically. Um, so I wanted to address that. Um, so I was asked, why don't, why don't I, I play a lot on uh, what I'm doing Twitch TV? And I was thinking, no one wants to see me play. I'm a physician. You know, who wants to see me play versus share with you knowledge about how to prevent injury? That's much more important, of course. All right. So I want to take a few other questions from you all. Let's, uh, uh, let's see if there are questions that I should take. Uh, let's take a look. Um, so I'll go, I'll go through again, and I'll, I'll, I'll look at a few questions. I want, I want to talk to you also about this. I want to show you some exercises that you can do with, with weights also that will help you. These are really simple, too. So you can get uh, a one-pound, two-pound, three-pound weight. Basic exercises with the weight. I'll, I'll use like a three-pound weight. Or here, with the elbow straight, up, down, up, down, up, down. Just like that, okay? These are just called flappers. And these are flappers, I call them, with the weight, up and down. Okay, and I would say recommend, set of 20, 15 to 20. And then you can, again, intensify that with the bottom windshield wipers. Let's do it from the side so you can see it. Just like that. Middle windshield wipers, here. And then the queen's wave, I call it, there. Okay, and back to the flappers. So the key there is to really strengthen your, your forearm. You know, many gamers will ask me, well, why is it important to have really strong forearm muscles? Well, think about it. You know, your forearm is going to dictate, along with your hand, your mouse use, you know, how, how quickly you can use the mouse. See, the mouse is not simply wrist. You also sometimes engage the forearm also. And also, when you're typing, if you're at the keyboard, let's say with uh, Overwatch, you know, so let's, let's say you're talking about keys A, W, D, S, and uh, E, well, depending on the, the player that you're having. But think about it. Your, your, your forearm muscles are engaged when you're, when you're typing also, when you're using the keyboard. So forearm strength is really important. You know, the basic stretches I've talked about before that I still love, and again, I want to reiterate, are the, the inertial exercises. And again, just straight up like that. And holding your fingers and hand back, just like this. Hold that for 30 seconds. This will help if you're having forearm discomfort or lateral epicondylar uh, discomfort, i.e. called tennis elbow also, or, or lateral elbow pain, and then down, of course, and hold just like that for 30 seconds. Um, the, the exercises are important because this is it. If, if you really want to game effectively, if you really want to win, if you want to be faster, then you have to be healthy. If you're not healthy, if you have pain, then you won't be able to play as properly. It just won't happen. That, that's just the bottom line. That's why I dedicate, you know, as busy as I am, you know, I, I'm dedicated to this community to help as much as I can. I, I truly am. And, and I think you know that by now. Um, okay, I'm going to take some questions right now. Um, let's go. So, Geo Sazen, is cracking your neck a bad thing to do? Well, that's a great question. So, Let's go over this. You know, I've talked about cracking joints before. I've never specifically talked about cracking your neck. We, we don't have any data that says that cracking your neck causes arthritis. But I will say this. If you're, if you're having pain and you crack your neck and you have more pain after that, then that's not a good thing. So make sure you're seen by your doctor. And then what I would do, if you have access to an orthopedic spine specialist or a neurosurgeon or a neurologist, I would ask them that question also. 
I've never been a big fan of of cracking the neck unless it's done by a a, a chiropractic physician who really specializes in that. Um, or sometimes uh, doctors of osteopathy, a DO. Um, you know, because so often in medicine, chiropractic medicine and doctors of osteopathy get such a, a, a hard rap from the medical community. But I believe in them. I think they offer great services. Chiropractors, doctors of osteopathy, uh, doctors who are certified in herbal Chinese medicine. I mean, these are, these are great physicians. They just have a different way of approaching how to heal the body. But every type of medicine has value. You know, as a Western trained physician myself and surgeon, a uh, medical doctor is no better than an osteopathy doctor or a doctor of Chinese herbal medicine or an acupuncturist. Everybody has value. We just throw different, um, different things into the mix. That's it. All right, next question is, uh, this is from Sad Gassum TF2. Can forearm tendonitis be responsible for my weak ring finger grip? My, my fist doesn't feel as strong when squeezed. It's definitely possible. Um, so forearm tendonitis, and this also said gas and TF2, it depends on where are you having the tendonitis. Is it extensor tendonitis? These are your extensors. The back of your hand allows you to extend your wrist, extend your fingers. Or is it flexor tendonitis? Here cause you to flex your, allows you to flex your fingers or make a fist. So it depends on which area that you're talking about. But yes, that can cause some decreased uh, grip strength there as well as pain, as well as discomfort. All right. Um, let's take another question here. This is from Framax uh, 4. How to fix a faulty sleep schedule? Go to sleep at 5 a.m. and wake up in the afternoon. Uh, from New Zealand, by the way, and it's 4 a.m. right now. Oh, hey, Framex. Well, glad to have you with us at 4 a.m. Wow. Yeah, I got to get to New Zealand. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. Um, so let's talk about that. The key with sleep is two things for that. Moderation and consistency. You have to really do the following. Pick out a time. Well, first, depend on what your, your work schedule is like and when you can really rest without setting the clock. Just go to sleep and let your body wake up when it wakes up, period. All right, and that will really get out of all of that super fatigue. Then I would say get back on a sleep schedule where by, by let's say, 10 o'clock, you're in bed. The alarm goes off by, by 5 or 6, whatever time you get to work. Then you get up, you know, do your exercises, your prayers, your meditation, whatever you do, uh, whatever works for your life. Then keep doing that on a regular cycle. The key is moderation, but you have to be consistent. If not, the body will be thrown off very, very quickly. You know, circadian rhythms are very, they're very interesting, very funny. So, but they like consistency. That, that's the best. And if you travel a lot, you know, the circadian patterns are often thrown off tremendously. So, again, consistency, consistency with respect to when's the, la the last meal you eat. I recommend doing that at least two hours before you go to sleep. And then, of course, not drinking the alcohol. Uh, before you go into sleep and just uh, be consistent about your pattern. I hope that helps you. All right, next question is, uh, let me find one here. Uh, this is from Toriel, hashtag O-W, T-O-R-I-E-L underscore O-W. Doctor, can you show us some exercise to warm up against shoulder contracture and tendonitis? Yes. So, Let's, let's go out. So I'll show you. Okay, we'll do some shoulder stuff. So, okay, for the shoulder, I'm going to try to sit up so you can see this. This is the exercise that I recommend that you do for, to, to, to minimize uh, rotator cuff tendonitis. So take a look. So your arm is here. Take a 5-pound, 10-pound weight. And again, it's going to be this. Internal, let me stand up here. Internal and external rotation. In and out. In and out. Just keep the elbow next to your body. You don't swing the elbow out. Elbow next to your body, in and out, in and out. The other exercise is you're going to go here to the side, up and down, up and down. All right. So again, the most important thing to prevent rotator cuff tendonitis that I recommend above all will be the internal and external rotation exercises. And then here, abduction. 
like that. Now, those are real basic, and I recommend doing three sets of 15 every other day. You know, and you can also do those at the gym. If you go to the gym, you can do those when you're, you're laying on the bench. You're laying on the bench, and then you can do those internal and external rotation exercises like that. that that's a great question. And I will say this. I do see a lot of tendonitis in the shoulder with gamers, but often it's because of posture, because of how they're sitting when they're gaming for so many hours. Because like I've said before, many times, you know, a lot of the gamers, the ones that I take care of, are not gaming three or four hours a day. You know, that's, that's lightweight. You know, they're, they're gaming, you know, 12, 16 hours a day, you know, four to six times a week. That's a lot. So the, if you're not sitting properly, you know, my goal is how to correct these issues so that you don't have these problems on your team or as well as an individual athlete. You know, pro or weekend warrior or just a daily gamer. You know, how do you prevent these injuries? So that's why we do this transmission. That's why we do this, this Twitch TV stream, all right? Um, so those are the ones that I recommend for that. And the other thing you can do too for your shoulders, you can, when you're sitting at your desk, just up and down. Just you can start with some shrugs, a set of like 10 or 15. You roll your shoulders back, a set of 10 or 15. Forward, 10 or 15. And then do the, the, the internal, external rotation exercises. All right? Um, okay, so that, that's the shoulder deal for right now. Um, Okay, next question here. Uh, does sleep schedule actually matter in terms of being a night owl or morning person? Well, yes, it does. Absolutely. You know, um, depending on, on your, your, so the sleep schedule depends on really four things. Your, your work schedule, your, your home life schedule, uh, your exercise schedule, um, a, a, as well as uh, so work, home life, and, and family, and job. Those are the major things there. So the goal is this, is having balance in your life and moderation. But if you're a morning person, well, make sure that your life is structured around getting up early in the morning, getting things done so you can sleep well at night. If you're a night person, well, a lot of night people will, will sleep during the day, and then they'll work at night depending on how they can get their lives to match up their sleep pattern. So, you know, it depends on what you do and and how close it is to your home. And, you know, it's, there's so many things about sleep patterns. It's a very tricky thing, actually. Um, so next question is, uh, oh, Atsukashi, oh, this is great since I started doing strengthening exercise with weights today. Okay, great to hear that, Atsukashi. Um, now, set gasm TF2, would these weight exercises aggravate my form tendonitis? Well, they can. If you use heavy weight, yes, it can be aggravated. So why don't you do this? You can start off doing all those exercises with no weights at all. So for the form tendonitis, just up and down. Okay, set of 10 or 15. Then the bottom windshield wipers. Middle windshield wipers. Queen's wave. No weight at all. That's nothing. You know, then the nursal exercises. Here. 30 seconds, up and hold, 30 seconds. So there, you don't need any weights at all. It's just your body. You know, one thing I'll tell you this that we do in CrossFit often is your body weight is often enough. You know, you don't need weights. Weights are, are supplemental. Yeah, we, we use weights, you know, to, to, for certain exercise, but it's really supplemental, all right? Um, so the next question let's get to is... Uh, uh, Framax 4, thanks, Atsuashi. It's hard for me to stay awake for over like 16 hours. LOL. All right. All right. So let me get to another question here. Uh, oh, oh, it's from Impurifier Doc. I love you. Can you take? Okay, great. I'm glad that I'm glad that helped you. Uh, let's get to another question. Uh, Zeladon, uh, if you have forearm or wrist tendonitis, can it heal while you're still playing on a daily basis? Oh, yeah, it can definitely heal. It depends on the following, though. You have to make sure that you're doing the strengthening and stretching exercises and also that you're taking the proper time to rest. See, the goal is this. We all want to play, which is great. However, again, moderation. If you're playing and have a lot of pain and you're still playing through the pain, then that's a problem. If you're playing and you start having discomfort, then I recommend stop at that point. Let's say you're playing, let's say, 12 hours a day, and you start having pain at, like, at, at 
at hour seven, then you stop for the rest of the day. You know, don't, don't, as I've said before, you know, we hear this old adage, no pain, no gain. Well, I don't believe that. If you have pain and discomfort, the body's telling you, hey, stop. Put the brakes on it. This is not working for me. I, I don't like the way you're making me feel. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you pain until you stop. So if you have discomfort and pain, then yes, it's really, really important that you, you trail off and let your body rest, let your body heal. And the other thing about, about healing, let's, let's go back to something very basic, but very, very, very important. And that is, if you are having pain and discomfort, make sure that your, your diet is correct, that you're eating properly, that you're eating nutrient-dense foods, that you're staying away from things that are really pro-inflammatory. Um, that you don't have a lot of fat and saturated fat in your diet, that you don't have a lot of white sugar, white bread, white rice in your diet, you know. And the thing about white rice, you know, I know for me and my family, we, we, I love white rice, but I have to minimize it because, you know, the nutritional value is definitely different than that of brown rice. But then both of them, they're still very dense starches, meaning the high carbohydrates. So a great way to, to put on a lot of weight quickly. You know, my family and I can tell you that. All right. Uh, next question. Um, this is from, uh, uh, oh, Zandep. Doc, I have pain uh, close to the ulnar nerve, and I feel discomfort on my fingers. Like I squeeze my hand all the time like TLC. I don't know. I already visited Doc, but he said that my image exam uh, was fine. Help me out, please. Okay, so Zandeb, X-A-N-D-E-B. Now, what you have to tell me is, where d do you have the pain at the ulnar nerve? Is it here at the medial epicondyle area? In this area, if you have discomfort here, it can often be associated with cubital tunnel syndrome. That's C-U-B-I-T-A-L, cubital tunnel syndrome. And that's, that is an area here where the ulnar nerve is compressed. You can get numbness and tingling in your small finger and half of, or the ulnar half of your ring finger, some decreased grip strength, and difficulty with pain sometimes that can, can radiate in this area. Um, now, or you can have ulnar nerve compression here at Guillain's Canal, where you don't have the compression of the ulnar nerve at the elbow, it's at the wrist, which can also cause some of those same problems depending on if it's the motor branch or the sensory branch that's impinged upon. All right, um, so you have to let me know that, and then give you some more information. Um, uh, so let's go here. Uh, this is from uh, Zandab. I had that before. Be careful how you lay your arm on the desk. That caused it for me. That's a great. That's a great point, Zeladon, because I often tell the athletes to, you know, when when you when you're confirming that your desk is ergonomically balanced. You know, your, your arm should be at 90 degrees when you're gaming, basically. And sometimes people do exactly what Zeladon says, and I, I love that comment, so thank you. They will rest their elbows on their desk and compress here. It's like when someone goes to the movies, for example, if you rest your elbows on those uh, seats that are not really well padded, you can, you can have numbness and tingling in your finger, especially the small finger, ring finger. That's from compression here of the ulnar nerve. All right. Even right now, all of you, if, if you're with me right now, if you just tap on this area here of your elbow, you will feel that that shocking sensation, like uh, electricity, uh, you know, electricity or a uh, calambres, uh, a lightning sensation in your small finger and your ring finger right here. If you tap right there, do you feel that? That's the ulnar nerve. Now, if you tap right here, also you'll also feel that same sort of shocking sensation because the ulnar nerve comes down here and runs right here, all right? So it depends on where, where the problem is, but, but Zeldon is absolutely right. If you, if you rest your, your elbows on a hard surface that compress that area, you'll have numbness, tingling, and pain. So, true. Uh, next question. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, I, I, oh, okay, Atsukashi, uh, what do you think of hot, cold water therapy? Simply wondering if I should do it. Okay, I, 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 like, I like contrast therapy, you know. We use hot and cold. Now, that depends on where the problem is, of course. Um, you know, 
I, I recommend the following. Often if someone has an acute injury, the first thing we will do is ice sometimes, a cold therapy. But I want to tell you, I've been doing this f for some of the athletes I take care of, and that is using warm compresses and heat initially as well as while they're healing. And I found great, great, great results with that. So I, I'm not sure yet, and I, th th there's no great research that is clear about using only cold therapy to decrease inflammation. Uh, I think initially, I think it's okay. It may be the better of the two. But I think for long term, I'm not sure if cold is the best. I'm not sure about that. All right. Um, next question is... Um, uh, let's see who this is. Okay. Hey, Doc, I think I have bicep tendonitis on my left forearm. I have lots of clicking and a sensation of weakness in my left shoulder as well. I believe it's impingement of some sort. What can I do to begin to remedy this? Okay. So, bicep tendonitis. Now, so I'll show you something here. So, biceps tendonitis. If you have tendonitis at the shoulder, if you guys feel this right now, if you, if you feel right across your shoulder here, you'll feel like a, like a rubber band there. That's the, that's the biceps tendon there. Do you feel that? It feels like a rubber band moving across your finger. That's biceps tendon. So if you have bicep tendonitis and shoulder pain, then I recommend the following. Number one, Minimize any heavy lifting in the gym if, you, if you're in the, going to the gym right now doing like bicep curls or if you're doing reverse preacher curls, I would minimize that for sure. Secondly, I would definitely do some therapy. Uh, I recommend ultrasound therapy for that and of course acupuncture. Physical therapy is still great for that, but acupuncture I found to be one of the best overall for any type of tendonitis in general. So I would do that. And then the other thing I would do is make sure that when you're sitting at your, your desk, again, that you're sitting upright and that you're, you're in the best ergonomic position. So I have a video on YouTube that's for ergonomic balancing of your, your competition area, you, you know, your desk and everything when you're gaming. So if you look at that, you'll, you'll get some tips of how to balance your desk space also. All right. Those are great questions. So the things to do, again, are, are rest. Physical therapy, I recommend, and acupuncture. And of course, always, I always give this disclaimer to everyone. You know, because I'm not able to actually examine you guys, you know, definitely go and be seen by your own treating physician. They need to, they need to evaluate you also. All right. Okay. Next question. Um, let's go here. Uh, this is from. Uh, Dark Jakaru, I feel frequent muscle tightness, fatigue in the hands and wrists, but no pain. Is this an early indicator of an issue, or can I reverse and wear, or can I reverse the wear and tear? I give my body time to heal. So, so if you're having frequent muscle tightness, fatigue in your hands and your wrists, the first thing I would say is check the sensitivity of your mouse. See if that will help you, and also. You know, it wasn't clear to me. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming this is your mouse hand, but, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's your keyboard hand also. And you actually say it's your hands and your wrist, so it's both hands, both wrists. So I recommend the following. You, you can do these basic exercises like this. I'll do them from the side here, just in and out. You know, just take a break when you're gaming for five minutes after every hour, just in and out. Roll your fingers down, basic piano. Reverse the piano. I hope you guys are doing this. All right. So piano, reverse the piano, around the world, back around the world. Close fist around the world, back around the world. So again, 10 to 15 this way, 10 to 15 this way, in and out, 10 to 15, open and close, piano, Reverse piano, 10 to 15. Those are just some basic exercises that you can do. I have you know, so many other exercises that, that are, are on my catalog of, of videos that you can use, of course. But those are some of the basic ones, all right? Um, let's take some other questions. So I hope that helps, Dark Jackaroo. Let me know. And also, guys, as always, I'd like to know where you guys are, are, are streaming in from. You, know, you guys know I'm in L.A., of course. I'd like to know where you guys are. 
Um, next question is from uh, Atsukashi Extreme TG. How long is this going for? Oh, the stream is for one hour. So I go from 8 until 9 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time. All right. Um, next question is, this is from Zandab. Uh, he says, my pain is close to the, to the fingers on the wrist. Close to the fingers on the wrist. Hmm. If you can, Zandab, send me a picture or something. Or uh, uh, It's not clear to me where, you, where you're referring to. All right. Uh, next one is, let's take a look here. This is from ELPA Dog, Elpa Dog. If I play on high sensitivity and aim a lot with my wrist, am I going to have a shorter gaming lifetime? No, I don't, I don't think so at all. No, that's a great question though. I thank you for that. I recommend the following. This is, this is the bottom line. Listen to your bodies, gamers. Listen to your body. If you're having pain, if you're having discomfort, then you have to back up and reassess. Reassess how you're playing. Reassess the keyboard that you have. Reassess the, the, the rest that you have for your wrist or your, or your hands. Reassess the mouse that you're using. Do you like the mouse that you have? Do you need to transfer or try a vertical mouse? See, the, the often the issue with a lot of the gamers that I take care of, and in the gaming community in general, of course, is that we get settled, myself included on something that we've been doing for years and we don't want to change because we know how fast we can use the mouse that we have. So just the thought sometime of going to a different mouse or a different keyboard can give us a lot of anxiety and stress because we think it's going to decrease how quickly we can play and how fast we are and if we're going to see, you know, victory on the street, on the, on the, on the screen versus defeat when we're playing. So I, I, I get it. I get it. But sometimes we have to think and remember that change is good, especially for the, our lifetime. Not only our gaming career, but for the rest of our lives, we need our hands, our wrists, our elbows, our shoulders, our necks to be healthy, you know? All right. Next question. Um, so, but again, playing on high sensitivity, I don't, I, no, I don't think that's going to shorten your gaming career. But if you're having discomfort and pain, then you have to monitor that yourself, all right? Uh, next one is... Um, uh, this is chaos underscore seven of uh, V11. Thank you so much for the answer. I felt the most pain doing biceps curls like you mentioned. Yep. I will cut those out for a while. Okay, chaos. I think if you do that, you'll feel better. The other thing I want to show you this, chaos. I should have shown you this earlier. So, so for the biceps tendon, take a look. I'll do it from the side, I think. Uh, well, maybe this side would be better. You can just take and you can just massage your biceps. Go from from this part of your forearm and just move straight up like that. So from down to up. You're not flex. Don't don't flex. Just real simple here. Now if you want to flex and do it, you can, but it won't be as beneficial. You know, you we have nothing to prove here. You're doing it for yourself. So just here. So just massage here, up, up, up. And then you can also massage this area where the uh, proximal anterior bicep tendon where this attaches and then we feel that rubber band there that's what that is all right um, uh, next question here is CSGO oh CSGO Craig hey uh, doc you should make a video about time management how do you think time how do you find time to be in that shape operate a podcast stream for us etc do you ever sleep <laughs> that's a very good question I yeah. Uh, I, I don't sleep a lot. Uh, I don't sleep very much. Uh, someone just asked me recently how much do I sleep, and uh, unfortunately, I'll share this with you. It's one of my own uh, major issues. I only sleep about two to maybe three to four hours a day. Um, yeah, I, I've 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 always been an internal uh, insomniac, basically. Um, so it helps me get a lot achieved, but I don't, I don't sleep a lot. And it's interesting because I always give people advice about how to sleep and how to manage their sleep patterns, but I, I've never slept well. Even as a, as, a, as a kid, you know, my family would be sleeping. I would always be up reading or doing things. I, I love reading, you know, uh, and I'd be up until, you know, 3, 4 in the morning reading and then have to get up at, at, at 6 <laughs> to, go to, to get to school on time. Uh, 
So yeah, I don't sleep a lot at all. So that's a great question. But I do work out every day. And I just want to note too, and I got a lot of great comments from, from folks on, uh, on Facebook about the Spartan race. I was in a world championship Spartan race in Lake Tahoe this past weekend, last weekend actually, um, the 30th. And uh, it was really tough. We did over 17 miles. It's a 17 plus mile run and over 33 agility, swimming, and, uh, and strength uh, obstacles. It was very, very tough, but I finished it and everything, so I'm really happy about that. Uh, next time we do the stream, I'll show you the medals we have for that. It really it was fantastic. I did the trifecta this year, the race, the super, and the beast. And the beast Spartan race was last week, and uh, so I'm really happy about that. So thank you, guys. You can check me out on Facebook. I hope you guys follow me on Facebook. It's just my name. D R L E V I Harrison. All right. So thanks, guys. So let's get back to you all. Enough talk about me. Um, this is from Shadowhawk. What is the tape on your forearm and wrist? Oh, okay. Uh, earlier, Shadow. This is from Shadowhawk, right? Earlier, I showed some techniques. If you're having thumb pain, for example, if you're using a mouse, you have pain while you're while you're using the mouse because of the maybe the sensitivity or. Maybe the mouse is old or just doesn't work for your body. These are techniques that you can use for your thumb. You have to look at the, the, the stream from earlier where I actually show you how to place the tape. And then this tape, if someone has gamer's thumb, gamer's thumb is someone who has stenosine tenosynovitis, locking of their thumb, as well as tendonitis, first sensibilis compartment tendonitis. This is also called de veins. D E Q U E R V A I N apostrophe S the Quervain Sinosin Tinosinovitis, which is impingement and pain in this area where you have two tendons, the abductor pollicis longus tendon and the extensor pollicis brevis tendon right here. All right, so that's why I have the tape on. I don't have that. I was just showing the, uh, our, our uh, streaming uh, family how to do it properly. All right, okay, next question is. Uh, Okay, this is from uh, Anne's last. After playing for one to two hours straight, I can feel strong pain from my neck. I'm from Estonia. Okay, from a beautiful place, Estonia. Uh, so let's talk about that. Um, if you're having pain in your neck, the most important thing is to think about this. When you're gaming, I'm going to do this from the side. When you're gaming, are you gaming like that? This, I call this goosenecking or turtlenecking. You know, gaming like that. You know, make sure that your, your, your shoulders are square, your head is up. You're at 90 degrees when you're gaming and that you're not sticking your neck out like that or that your chin is down like this. I always have to correct this with the majority of the gamers. Is they're like this. You know, if, if for example, they have a console. You know, the console like this and their neck is down like that. So that's really, really important. Okay. Uh, next question is from, uh, you know, and can you guys hear me? Also, let me know. Can you guys hear me? For some reason, just now I started getting some odd feedback in, in, my, uh, in my headset. Let me know. Can you guys hear me? Uh, all right. So continuing on. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, let me find one of the questions here, guys. Uh, this is from Baytux. Yo, Levi, enjoyed your latest video. Oh, great to hear that good stuff. Oh, great, Vatux. Great. That was from V-A-T-T-U-X. And where are you from also, Vatux? And also, which video are you, are you talking about, too? Um, curious about that. Um, oh, I got another one here from Fat Soggy Muffin. That guy is so funny. That's the funniest name to me. Uh, which video? That I, I just asked the same thing, uh, Fat Soggy Muffin. Which video is Vatux talking about? Um, uh, CSGO Craig, Doc Howe. Now, uh, CSGO Craig, what are you asking? Let me know um, what you're, you're asking me about. I don't know if you're asking about my sleep patterns because I only sleep two to four hours a day. It's not good. I want, I want to tell everyone too now, uh, my, my not sleeping is not a good thing. That's just my body is just so used to it. I mean, I exercise every day, two to four hours. You know, I, I do CrossFit. I, I do fitness competitions. Um, you know, I'm writing right now. I have a new, I have a big surprise for you guys coming up soon too. Uh, something I'm writing specifically for the gaming community. Um, yes, only two to four hours, but I'm, I'm not advocating that at all. You know, I always tell people, people say, oh, well, you do this, everything is great. You know, I have my issues, trust me. 
and not sleeping properly is definitely one of them. Um, okay, so let's go to another question here. Um, uh, Dr. Levi, is there any sort of diet you recommend to stay energetic throughout the day? Oh, absolutely. The number one thing to do, I'd say, is to drink a lot of water. Water is really critical. Um, I, I, one thing I do is, you know, I, 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 I share this with you. I have, I have a neighbor who she's always asking me, she said, you know, you're, she's always talking about my skin. And I always tell her, well, the skin is only a, a projection of what's going on internally. You know, so I always tell her, you know, if you really want great skin, you have to, you have to drink a lot of water. You just have to use sunscreen and sunblock, of course. Um, so I say the number one thing when it comes to diet is drinking water, minimizing high carbohydrate foods such as, again, sugar, a lot of salt, a lot of white flour, white rice, white bread. You know, cookies, cakes, a lot of fried foods, a lot of ice cream, minimizing all the junk stuff, and then making sure that your diet is highly nutrient dense. Nutrient dense foods are, if you eat whole grains, then whole grains, of course. Then, and if you eat fish, fish, you know, especially you know wild caught salmon, um, eating as organic as you can afford. I tell people. If you can't afford it, then well, if you can't afford the organic vegetables, well, what about frozen vegetables at least? But to eat as vegetables constantly, of course. And for snacks, when I'm snacking, I may snack on, for example, you know, walnuts or, or almonds or carrot sticks. Um, you know, eat kale if you like kale, for example. Um, the goal is to, to, to make sure you're eating a balanced diet and to eat properly every day, to exercise every day, to minimize smoking, drinking. When I'm talking about smoking, I remind people, I'm talking about when I say smoking, I'm talking about not smoking cigarettes, marijuana, weed, uh, hookah, vaping, all electric cigarettes, all that stuff. I'm saying don't, I, I'm, I'm recommending that you don't do that. You know, because you are what you eat, drink, and smoke. So our bodies can only be a projection of what's going on internally. So if you want to be fit and healthy, then I recommend you, you try to eat better. But then as you're going through the process, have no self-condemnation about it. If you're overweight right now, that's fine. Do what you can to get better. Do something every day. Exercise every day for 15 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, 45 minutes. Before you know it, in several months, you're up to an hour a day, and you love exercising. You really want to fall in love with a healthy lifestyle. More importantly, fall in love with yourself, all right? All right, next question. Um, uh, oh, CSGO Craig asking me, only question is how do you manage to be this energetic with two to four hours of sleep? I, you know, you'd have to ask my family. I mean, I've been, I've been doing this my, my whole life. I've, I've, I've never been a sleeper, you know. My father, you know, uh, who passed away, uh, um, and my dad, uh, who passed away uh, several years ago, he was also very much like myself. He, he, uh, he was brilliant. My, my dad, I'll tell you a funny story. My dad could take like like five numbers. Like you could say like what's what's 2,522 times 3,168. He can give you the answer in like three seconds. He was, he was amazing. Uh, but he was also not a sleeper. Um, you know, I miss my dad. Um, all right, so let's, let's continue. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, you said there's a, okay, this is from Xtreme 2G. There's a delay in your stream. Okay, I'm not sure why that is. Okay, can you guys hear me though? I, let, let me know, can you hear me? Uh, I'm not sure why there's a delay in the stream. No one said that. That's from Xtreme 2G. Huh. I'm not sure. So if there is, I apologize, guys. Um, next question is from Zandab. Uh, I'm the guy with the auto nerve pain. You asked if I was uh, on the elbow or the wrist. I said it's on the wrist. Okay, if you can give me some tips to get it better, I would thank you a lot. I do CrossFit for a year, and this pain only comes when I'm playing on a computer or writing with a pen. Uh, by the way, I'm in Brazil. Wow, that's a beautiful place. Um, so, yes, so if it's at the wrist, I recommend, if you have an auto nerve pain at the wrist, so I recommend the following. So, so do this exercise. So, again, here, up and down. So, look. Do it from the side, up and down, 
side to side. So again, up and down, side to side, around the world, back around the world. But keep your thumb up, all right? Then the other thing, if you're having pain here at the wrist, I recommend massaging this area by the pisiform bone. You know, 10 times that way, 10 times the other way, all right? Um, that, that may help you. The other thing, too, if you have an outer nerve pain there, it's at the wrist, you know, put your hand, soak your hands in warm water before you play, and then after you game, soak your hands in warm water again for like three to five minutes. And also, don't forget, I, ha I have the exercises that, that show you how to do exercises in the bowl of water. You know, those are really critical. You know, of, I'd say of all the videos I've done, I've gotten some of the, the best response from people saying how much that helped them, like just soaking their hands in warm water, all right? Okay, next question. Um, this is from, uh, uh, oh, Elpa Dog. Oh, sorry to hear about my father. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I miss my dad. That, that's, uh, so thanks for that. Thanks for that. Um, so this is from Kalani underscore, K-L-A-N-I. I have everything on maximum volume stream and PC. Uh, okay. Uh, this is uh, Pro Z. I too, sorry to hear about my dad. Oh, thank you again, guys. Uh, so, uh, this is from Max underscore San. Do you think your exercise can apply to guitar playing? Let me tell you, yes, they can. That's a great question. But I got I got to announce to you guys. I'm happy to tell you this is uh, within the next uh, two to three months, I'll be doing a video specifically, specific. I've been wanting to do this for years, and so now I'm really excited about it. Specifically for for musicians. It'll be for guitar players, for drummers, for keyboardists. It's going to be a great video. I'm working on that now. I'm designing that whole project right now. I have about, uh, I'd say maybe like 25 exercises right now that I've written out that I've designed, you know, after watching uh, those specific types of musicians play. And I have so many that are my patients anyway that I, and they've asked me also. So, yes, I have within two to three months, you guys are going to get a video specifically for musicians. It's going to be, it's going to be groundbreaking, I believe. I think it's going to, it's going to help so many people. I'm really, uh, I'm really, really, really excited about that. So, so great question. So, thanks, thanks, thanks. Yes, so that's coming. Um, next question. Uh, uh, hold on one second. Guys, you guys got so many things coming through here. Oh, it's 8.59, guys. You know, I know that like a minute. Uh, uh, this, okay, let me try to get to another question here, guys. Uh, this is from SPCOPS underscore Delta. I see some uh, uh, CSGO players that tape their hands all the way up to their forearm, to the elbow. What is the purpose of this? Well, what they're trying to do is minimize any any tendonized inflammation that they may have in this area and increase blood flow that's why they do it but that's if the taping is done properly i see a lot of taping online i see a lot of guys even at some some pro players you know i i, I just want to tell their trainers you're not doing it right but because they don't consult with me sometime i just let them do it and i just uh i see horrible taping sometimes it, it does totally ineffective taping has to be done properly for it to work properly um, uh, so now the question, uh, okay, Atsukashi, can't wait for the videos, fantastic. Okay, guys, I hope this was helpful today, you know, I appreciate interacting with you. Um, please join me on all my social media platforms on, uh, Facebook, please go to Facebook, take a look at some of the Spartan race pictures, and you have a few pictures of how my hand, how I had all these horrible blisters on my hands, I still have them on my feet from the 17 miles. Tahoe was a 4,800 feet elevation. It was tough, but made it, thank God. So check out check out everything on Facebook. Join me there on Facebook, on YouTube, of course, on IG, Instagram, as well as, of course, Twitter. So I hope this was helpful today. I appreciate you guys, and uh, I hope you appreciate my contribution to the, the gaming community. I'm very, very grateful. All right? I have some big surprises coming soon, so all I can say is get ready, guys. All right? So I'll close out with my famous words, at least the words that I like, I hope they're famous, that I like a lot, which are game on. All right, see you guys later. Have a great, great week, and uh, keep the people in Las Vegas and all those first responders and all the people that were affected in your positive thoughts, meditations, and prayers.
All right, this is Dr. Levi. Take care, guys. Keep on playing. Play safely. Do the exercises. Bye.